Today we have the all new three row Jeep Grand Cherokee L and it is the complete package and I might be in trouble. I'm in trouble because my wife loves this vehicle. It is definitely wife approved, but it's very expensive at this trim level too. Now I gotta tell you, you get a lot of features, a lot of options. It's a complete package in terms of capability, space, and just luxuriousness as well. We're gonna take a full deep detailed dive at the exterior, the interior, take it out on the road and go for a test drive. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. Now let's start things off by looking at the exterior. So this is of course a brand new redesign and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Before we dive into the exterior, let's take a look at the trim levels. You'll start with the base Laredo, then the altitude package, and then the limited Overland, which we have here, Summit and the top end luxurious Summit Reserve. Okay, so starting right up front. First of all, you're gonna get this signature seven slot grill. And I really like this front end. It is nice and bold. You've got some elements of chrome and some black. The grill's gonna vary a little bit depending on the trims, but you're gonna get seven slot grill no matter what for classic Jeep. Now you've got the accent light above and we have LED headlight standard and LED daytime running lights. Those are indeed reflector headlights. Even though Jeep says the top trims will get projector headlights, on their comparison page, all of them get reflector headlights. So every single Jeep is gonna give you these premium LED reflector high and low beams. Plus we've got LED fog lights. As you can see those small fog lights on the sides, those are gonna be on the limited trim and up. In the front, we've also got sensors for our parking sensors. You can also see we have tow hooks. It's nice to see tow hooks on this Overland model. I believe those are only on the Overland model. And then you can see full LED because we've got an LED blinker here. Got a nice long hood without being too like angled or too muscular. It's just a very sleek design with the hood and this front end. And at night, I've got a night video showing off just how well these headlights do. And the fog lights even act as cornering lights on the Overland model and up. So be sure to check out the video if you wanna see more about that. Now this paint color is called bright white. And that's exactly what it is. There's not really any metallic sheen to it or anything like that, but I still think it looks good on this Jeep. And with this redesign, you've got a long body style. You've got a line running throughout the entire vehicle. You've got pretty large windows. What do you guys think of this new Jeep design on this Grand Cherokee L? One thing with Jeep that is traditional is you've got a fairly short overhang in the front for a good approach angle for some off-road prowess. I like the trapezoidal wheel arches as well. And then we have optional wheels on this Overland model. We actually have 18 inch wheels with some off-road tires, but typically you'll get 20 inch wheels standard on the Overland and even up to 21 inch wheels on the Summit Reserve. Of course, with the 4x4, we've got the trail rated badge. And also check this out. My fellow Americans, we've got the American flag right behind Grand Cherokee on both sides of the vehicle. And then the details on the mirrors. As you can see, we've got turn signals. That's gonna be standard. The gloss black on the mirror is gonna be standard on every trim. They're also gonna be heated on every trim. For those of you that live up north, that can be really handy. But we also got blind spot indicators in here. The upper trim levels will give you an automatic dimming driver side mirror, and then power folding and reverse tilting function as well. And as we back out, we've got little chrome accents on those door handles, and that matches that chrome accent above the windows. And that chrome piece actually comes all the way out the back and wraps around under the glass and back out to the other side. So it's kind of a unique connecting piece that also distinguishes this from the Wagoneer, the larger Wagoneer. And dimensionally, this is almost 205 inches long. So this is a long vehicle, much longer than the two row Grand Cherokee and longer than many other three row SUVs as well. It's gonna have an independent front and rear suspension with the quadrilift air suspension on the top couple models with adaptive damping. And I'll go through those in just a little bit. In the back, Jeep gives you LED taillights standard. It's a nice, slim design, looks good at night. And you can see we even have an LED blinker, which is a red matching blinker there. You've got the L badge right next to 4x4. And then the exhausts are mostly concealed, but they are actually there behind the bumper. It's just a little bit different than usual. And then under the vehicles where you'll find your spare tire, you'll get a compact spare tire on lower trims and a full size spare tire on the Overland or higher, but you can get this full size spare tire optional on any of the lower trims. The cargo area on three row vehicles is really important and especially the little area behind the third row. Well, every single Jeep Grand Cherokee L is gonna give you a power activated lift gate, 
but the Overland trim and higher will give you that foot activated lift gate, just like I showed you right here. Now, the area behind the third row definitely isn't great, but it is better than most because this is a big vehicle. So this standard size stroller, I can fit right here. I have to put it up, I can't lay it down. You can fit some carry-on suitcases, but let's go ahead and dive in a little bit more. All right, now that we're back here, one quick thing I wanna show you is that both sides of this lift gate have little floodlights or little uh, puddle lights to where it'll shine down at your feet. So loading at night won't be so bad. And the other thing is, I'll show you in a second, this vehicle can be lowered or raised. So if you have it lowered, it definitely makes it easier to get some stuff in here. And here's an idea of how much space there is behind the third row, about 17 cubic feet. Like I said, my stroller fit, some carry-on suitcases fit. This is the button to close it or to set the height. You've got this, which could work as a grocery bag or a cargo net hook. Same with this one. There's an LED light right there. And there's also a little hook up there for another net if you need to. You're set with tie downs. There's one on each side here. There's a little storage area down there and the same kind of setup here, but check this out. I'll show you the power folding function in a second, but you've got power folding second and third row and a 12 volt power outlet. Plus, of course, you've got under floor storage, which is always nice. And the jack is down here, but the spare tire is under the vehicle. So the power folding seats are on the Overland trim and higher, and you just have to touch it and then it will automatically fold. And it's really nice and flat when those are folded down. So you've got a mid 40 foot uh, cubic feet here. So definitely good space. It is fairly wide as well. So can't complain about that. And then same thing with the second row, boom, it just folds down. It kind of popped back up for just a sec, but it does actually get really flat. I have my car seat in that one, so I'm gonna leave that one. But it's a nice big flat area with about 85 cubic feet. And then another hands-free feature, when you're all done, let's say you just grabbed a bunch of stuff out of here, just swipe your foot and then it'll automatically close too. Now let's look at the smart key system from Jeep. So we've got this key fob here. It does have kind of a nicer soft material right here and some metal on the side. And of course, it says Jeep on the back. Let me show you how this works. So the smart key system is standard on every trim level. And what you get with that is little lines right here. You can touch the door handle to lock it. Mirrors will power fold, or you've got a sensor in the back to unlock it. And then the cool thing is on the Overland trim and up, you've got the same sensors on the back doors. The bottom trims don't have it on the back doors, but just on the front two doors. And then remote start is on everything but the base, but you can get it optional on that base Laredo. And another cool thing is the proximity approach lighting on the Overland trim and Summit trims to where you approach the vehicle and the door handles will light up, the mirrors will light up, and the headlights come on to a nice welcome approach. And just for reference, I'm five foot nine. It's really easy for me to get into this vehicle, but if you have mobility issues, this has the Quadralift air suspension, which can lower the vehicle a couple inches to make it easier for you to get in. So right now it's at its lowest height and if I open the door, it's a pretty easy climb in. So something to keep in mind, makes it real easy to get in. All right, now I wanna show you the different ride heights and what it looks like. So I'm gonna fast forward as the vehicle goes through its movement, but we're in the lowest entry exit ride height to make it easiest to get inside the vehicle. Let's go up to the next level. Okay, now we're at the aerodynamic ride height. So when you're at cruising speeds on the highway, it's gonna automatically lower you from the normal ride height to this aerodynamic height. Now we're at the normal ride height. This is what it's typically gonna be at. And if you don't mess around with the settings, it's just gonna stay at this ride height anyways, unless you get up to highway speeds. And then we've got two different off-road heights. So first one coming up. Okay, now we're at the off-road height number one, and let's go to off-road height number two. Now we're at off-road height number two, and this gives you 11 inches of ground clearance, or just about 11 inches of ground clearance, and you can ford two feet of water. So that's pretty impressive for this big three row. And this is only with the Quadra Lift air suspension, which is on the Overland and Summit models. So right off the bat, like I showed you, the Quadra Lift air suspension with the uh, lowering system you can get an entry exit movable seat and steering wheel on the upper trims so you've got memory settings your seat can automatically move to where your memory is you can have that turn off or on 
And I've got to say, comfort of these seats is great. I really don't have any complaints. I've been able to spend a decent amount of time in here. The headrest can even move forward and backwards so that it's not just up and down and it's not intrusive. The bolstering is good. I like all of the adjustments available on here. I'm sure even the base cloth seats are probably comfortable if they have the same kind of shaping and bolstering as these do. Room is also very good. Just got no complaints. All right, let me give you a closer look at these seats. So the base Laredo is gonna give you cloth seats and everything else is gonna give you different leathers. We have Napa leather on our Overland model and I'll tell you what you get on the top end uh, model in a little bit. I'll show you in a sec, but these headrests are adjustable forward. You've got Overland written across here. These are perforated. They've got nice bolstering. This Napa leather is definitely nice and soft as well. I like the side bolsters. I like the bottom cushion. I'll talk about comfort more in a second but they just look good overall too. You can get different color interiors. I'll show you a lighter color coming up soon. But all the adjustments on here are ridiculous. So you've got four-way power lumbar adjustment. You've got your regular reclining function, but this also adjusts your bolster. So you can make your bolsters around your side tighter or wider. Your regular tilting function and seat, adjust or seat height, but then this is a thigh extension. So you can extend your thigh cushion with that. So you've got power adjustments all over. And here's a nice thing, heated seats are standard on every single trim level. Ventilated seats are optional on the Limited, but then standard on the Overland and Summit models. And then another thing, one of my favorites, there's a little button over by your memory settings, you can get massaging seats standard on the Summit models or optional on this Overland. And there's several different things you can go through on the screen to change your massage settings, but it actually works pretty well. It's better than some seats that just kind of move a little bit and call it a massage. These actually kind of get into your back a little bit. Like you saw, the steering wheel is power tilt and telescoping on this model and on the upper trims. It's gonna be regular on the others, but it's leather on every single trim and it can be heated on every single trim. I believe it's an option on the base Laredo. Otherwise, I think it's standard on everything else. And if you wanna be really bougie, go for that Summit Reserve package because you're gonna get hand wrapped, quilted Palermo leather for your seats and it is just gorgeous. Now looking at the back seat, big news here. So most of the time in different vehicles, you're stuck with either captain's chairs or a bench seat. Well, this comes standard with captain's chairs on every single model, but if you want a bench seat, you can get a bench seat optional on every single model as well. Thank you Jeep for giving us the option. Now there's a lot of good stuff back here. So first of all, foot space is pretty good. It's not quite as good as some vehicles, but leg space is good, knee space. The overall space back here is very good. If you look at actual measurements, there's really not a lot to complain about. My seat can move forward and backwards. So if it's all the way forward, my knees are pressing into there. So I can't quite fit. But like I said, I am five foot nine. And check it out. Most of the time, you'll get just single zone climate control, but we've got dual zone climate control optional on our Overland and on the Summit models. So you and your pass, or you and the other backseat passenger can control your own temperature you can control your fan speed. You can have it on just automatic. You can have it synced up with the front as well, and you can turn it so that you can lock it so your backseat passengers aren't messing around with it back here too. And on the limited trim and up, you're gonna get heated seats back here. They are three tier heated seats. And if you get the Summit Reserve, the top end Summit Reserve, you'll get these back seats heated and ventilated. But wait, there's more. You've got air conditioning vents right there. And then we've got four USB charging ports and a three prong outlet, plus a little storage area and a couple of cup holders. And on the pillar on each side, there are also more air conditioning vents. That's wonderful. The material on this back door is also the same soft material up and below that you get in the front seat too. And one thing that I really appreciate is that there are little hooks right here, or like little areas where you can hook grocery bags instead of just a regular mat pocket. I've stuck some grocery bags back here so they don't move around and it works great. Those are on both sides. Now in the middle, we don't have any special center console or anything like that in here, but we've got this folding armrest. But in the Summit models, you'll get a special center console that goes in here. And if you want a window shade, this is optional on the limited trim, if I can get this up there and standard on everything else. And aside from scooting forward and backwards, these seats can recline way back. So you can get pretty comfortable back here and space is definitely good. And now getting into the third row, you can pull this lever and you can just kick this seat out of the way. There's not like a simple push button type of thing like some vehicles, but this gives you a lot of space to get into the third row, which is a two seat third row. 
Now for reference, sitting behind myself, I have just barely enough knee space, but my feet are definitely crammed. Obviously, there's room right here. And I have that seat where my car seat can still fit and my wife can sit comfortably in the front. And there's plenty of room in this third row. So not too bad of a third row. Each side gets a cup holder and most trims are gonna give you USB ports. I believe the base Laredo makes it optional. And then you also got air conditioning vents for your third row passengers, which is awesome. And at five foot nine, I can even sit up tall back here and be comfortable. The interior of this Grand Cherokee L is a very nice place to be. It feels premium and spacious. So starting right out, push button start. All models get push button start. You've got the standard big gauge up there and this big screen over here and a whole bunch of different soft materials all throughout the cabin and quality looking materials as well. Okay, now right away over on the door, first of all, you've got your memory settings here and then there's the button for massage. This is not real wood, but you'll get real wood on the uh, summit reserve it's an open pour uh waxed walnut otherwise the summit will give you open pour oak so you get real wood up there but soft material here soft material down here and soft here as well good grab handle and all four windows are automatic one touch then down here there's a little bit of storage there is one bottle holder and a little knickknack storage there into the side just to the inside you've got your light controls and fog lights and then you can adjust your ambient lighting brightness and your interior cluster brightness there's an electronic parking brake down there i'd like to see a real physical brake but electronic parking brakes are becoming more and more standard so right in front of us this steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to you've even got a little bit of trim in here i'm not a huge fan of that but the rest of it is soft and comfortable leather wrapped you've even got some stitching along the inside of that steering wheel as well um, as typical with Jeep, you've got like your information control functions, cruise control functions on here, and then audio controls on the back of each side. Plus, we even get paddle shifters on this steering wheel. You'll also find rain sensing windshield wipers on this stock. And then right in front of us on the windshield, we've got this available head up display on the Overland trim and higher, and you can turn it completely off if you want to. You can change the brightness. You can even change the layout of the content on here. So right now it's the advanced layout where you can see the lanes right there. I know it's kind of hard to see because it is bright out right now, but you can get rid of the lanes, have more of a standard one or a simplified one of just the miles per hour. But it's kind of cool how you can adjust that. Then right in front of us, this frameless display is standard on everything, a frameless digital gauge cluster. So there's a lot of information that you can see on here. It's still easy to move around and navigate like the older versions and like current other versions uh, but there's a ton of different vehicle information there's adjustable settings on here you can even have a customizable menu check it out you can even see navigation I mean, there's just a bunch that you can see so let me uh, keep going to like the main page here there's our night vision camera and then you can even have the big clusters there too if you want to and then up on the dash, you've got soft material up here, just some you know, genuine attention to detail along this interior. And then like I said, you'll have some real open pour wood on the summit models over on the door and the dash. And then you'll have a little bit of a different center console set up with the summit reserve too. But all of them are gonna give you this large 10.1 inch screen on the upper trims. Uh, the 8.4 inch screen is standard on lower models, but then this is on the Overland trim and higher and optional on the Limited. Right up on the top, you've got a couple of switches like lane keeping system, traction control, and parking sensors. And even though this is kind of inclined up and it's not really covered, it's integrated into the dash and I have not had any glare issues up to date. I like this screen. We also get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto on every single model. So that's nice. And then it's all touch sensitive up here with which is typical for you know Stellantis slash FCA nowadays um, but I'd like to see a little bit more physical buttons but you do get a volume knob and a tuning knob down there which is good and you can access pretty much everything that you need to I mean even your climate controls your media your uh, speaker system is going to range anywhere from a six speaker system all the way up to a nine speaker and then we've got a 19 speaker Macintosh system. You can see on the door, there's a little Macintosh emblem there. Up on the dash, little Macintosh. There are 19 speakers throughout here, 950 watts, and it sounds fantastic. Check this out, another cool feature. So you can have customizable apps on like shortcuts that you wanna see, but we have a fam cam. 
So you can literally see your second and third row passengers and you can tap on whichever seat you want it to zoom in on. So when my daughter's in there, I can keep a close eye on her and check on her anytime I need to. And this is just an awesome feature. If I go in reverse, we've got a surround vision camera. You can change the views. It's not quite as detailed as some, but I do like the fact that you still get it. You can see the back camera. You can even see the front camera with trajectory. And you can use this as an off-road camera as well to see in front of the vehicle. The only thing I wish is you could zoom in kind of on like the side, you know, like the wheels to make sure that you're like perfectly next to a curb or something like that. But this is still nice to have. You'll see all the climate controls below the screen. You've even got heated steering wheel, ventilated and heated seats on both sides. It's pretty easy to use. You still have physical controls for this, but you've got more touch controls up, that, up at the top if you want. And then you've got four USB charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet, and wireless charging, which is optional on every single trim level. So that's nice that you have that down there too. One thing I don't like is this is all covered in piano black, like this entire cluster or this entire center console so i would definitely recommend keeping it up because this is going to be filthy with lint and scratches which just should not be in a vehicle this expensive all right now check out these controls first of all this is our shifter we've got the dial shifter and then you've got your different drive modes here we've got three different types of four-wheel drive controls we even can get a four-wheel drive low an automatic hold button um, downhill assist you can put it in neutral for towing and then your height adjustment for your quadra lift air suspension is right there these bottle holders work pretty well they have ambient lighting inside of them as well they are a little on the small side but still work for the most part my only complaint is that if you have two bottles here or even two drinks with straws or something those are in the way of these controls it's not like you really have to get to these that much but and if you have a smaller drink it's definitely a not ideal ergonomic reach to reach down there and pull up. Um, I'd like to see a little bit of repositioning of these, but they'll work pretty much all the time. Coming back, we've got a pretty good size armrest. It's not quite as long as I would like, but it's soft, it's padded, it's two-tiered, so you've got one softly lined storage area, and you've got two softly lined storage areas with a light in here. Jeep also gives you a locking glove box that has a soft liner and soft opening in there too, and it's pretty good size. Now check this out. We have the digital rear view mirror. You can have it be uh, just a regular auto dimming rear view mirror, but you can get this digital rear view mirror on the limited trim. Otherwise it's standard uh, at the top end summit reserve. So you can get it in the in-between and upper models and you can see perfectly behind you. You don't have to have it like that. You can have a regular mirror if you want, but I keep it on this quite a bit, and at night there's zero glare uh, in your face. Overhead, we've got all ambient lighting, in, or all LED lighting. We also have ambient lighting. There's a little ambient light that hangs out in there at night. I like how you have actual controls and buttons for everything that we need. And let's go ahead and open up this panoramic roof. So the panoramic roof, it's pretty big. It's a double pane roof. Open that up a little more so it has one stop and then two stops goes all the way back This is optional on the limited trim or standard on the upper trim levels And this first pane of glass will open up if you want a regular sunroof Those are optional on the bottom two trims and one more fun feature be sure to check out my night video But we've got five different ambient light colors so you can have blue kind of like a sea green white Yellowish or red you can change that anytime you want to that's on the Overland and Summit. The Limited will give you just a one color ambient light. We also have garage controls up on our visor. And as you would expect, the way it should be, the visor slides out. Now a look at visibility. I have good visibility out the front, no complaint. It's a really large second window and you can even fold the headdress of the third row if they're not in use. And the second row seat kind of gets in the way of that window, but I really haven't had any troubles with visibility. Uh, plus, we have blind spot monitoring on every single trim level. Now, under the hood of this Grand Cherokee L, Jeep gives you two options. You can get the Pentastar V6, which is standard across the board, or you can get the Hemi 5.7 liter V8. So I did get to ride in one of these Grand Cherokee L's that had the V6, and it felt peppy enough, it felt fine, and I think for most people it's going to be completely sufficient. This is a big vehicle, so you got to keep that in mind. It's not going to be as peppy as some other three rows with V6s, but I think it's good enough for most people. But under the hood here, 
This 5.7 liter Hemi VA is a $3,300 option and it's only available with 4x4 models. It's going to give you 357 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. That includes cylinder deactivation to help give us miles per gallon of 14 in the city and 22 on the highway. That's definitely not great, but considering the power right here, I'll take it. And a big bonus of this Grand Cherokee L over some other three rows, especially like the crossover type midsize three rows, is that this can tow 6,200 pounds with the V6 or 7,200 pounds with this V8. All right, let's get behind the wheel and take this Grand Cherokee L for a drive. Now, we're gonna talk about ride comfort in this test drive. We're gonna talk about acceleration and just the overall daily driving dynamics of this vehicle. So, first of all, we're just gonna start in auto mode, like normal mode, basically. And the suspension will kind of adjust itself as we go with uh, height adjustment so it's moving us up to the normal ride height and you don't really even notice it unless you're sitting still um, one thing i got to say off the bat is that i like the ride height i like the the angle out the front the steering wheel is pretty comfortable to hold on to and initial impressions are that this just feels like a big smooth vehicle but it doesn't feel as tough to like maneuver as some big vehicles like an expedition for example or suburban because it's not quite that big but a little bit of pedal down zoom zoom and this hemi and the eight speed transmission have been uh pretty smooth and we'll get on it a little bit more in a little bit so you get an idea of what that acceleration is like um i'm gonna have a full video on the driver assist features demonstration with that like the lane centering radar cruise control stuff like that but the steering is adjustable so you can have it be a little bit stiffer a little more comfort oriented or just kind of middle of the road i have it middle of the road right now and i like it i gotta say the input of the steering feels good for a vehicle this big it doesn't feel wallowy and wishy-washy it feels secure i mean it feels like if you are nervous about driving a big vehicle like this this is pretty easy to drive around, all things considered, for its size. On a day-to-day -day driving basis, the screen, I haven't had any glare issues. I wish there was a little bit more like physical buttons for just quick stuff, but you can customize and have shortcuts for the touch screen, uh, so that works well. This big digital display in the middle also works really well, and it's very clear, easy to see, easy to read. The head-up display in front of us um, I don't see it very well with polarized lenses on, um, but it still works and you can shut it off if you want to. And I really like this digital rear view mirror up here too for good visibility out the back, but I'm gonna turn that off just so that's not distracting for y'all. Um, but we'll go ahead and get on it in just a sec. All right, I'm gonna put it in sport mode for a bit. With this V8, this thing should really move. Got to comment one thing on the brakes in just a second. All right. Get up to speed here in a sec and then pedal down. And it's a smooth shifting eight speed. I haven't had any problems with it in the entire time I've had it. A lot of new transmissions have some clunkiness, but this has been good. And this has an adaptive suspension with this quadrilift air suspension. So it should be pretty level around these corners. And it really is. It handles well for a big vehicle. And Jeep has done a good job of letting you hear some of the V8, but also making this a quiet vehicle too. So Jeep went so far to make not only these windows laminated, but even the back door windows laminated. So wind noise is actually really, really low. I think I've got to say, so I took decibel ratings and I'll talk about this in a second. And there's something that's probably making this a little louder than it should be, but we'll talk about it in a second. But handling is good. Most of you aren't gonna be driving this hard. Most of you won't have a V8. And most of you won't need to really go around sharp curves a lot and canyons and things like that. But this Jeep is willing and able and capable to do so. It's just weird saying Jeep, honestly, too, with just how nice this is driving and handling. I know the regular Grand Cherokee is a nice vehicle, but 
a big Jeep like this, this thing is impressive, I've got to say. But the only, I guess one thing I would complain about is the feeling of the brake pedal. I just don't get a lot of good feedback from it. That's one thing to complain about. It takes some getting used to. Um, I've kind of had some not so smooth slowdowns because I'm just not used to it yet. Uh, but something that you'll probably get used to and not really complain about and it's hard for me because I go from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle each week So it's just a new experience all the time But man, this Jeep is nice. I like the driving characteristics. I like the ride position You can make it sporty if you want to Kind of but you got the V8 power nonetheless. So good for that. Now we're on a rough textured road and this is where we get some road noise that comes in I've got to say this is louder than I expected it to be with road noise and I think it's got to be exclusively because we have off-road tires they are knobby tires so they're gonna bring in some noise if you have any of the other Jeeps I'll bet you that it's pretty darn quiet because Jeep has gone to extensive lengths to make this quiet like I said the laminated glass here and in the back um, and the extra sealant and the rigid body of this thing so uh, let me know if you drive any of the other Jeep Grand Cherokee L's and let me know about the noise but this the decibel ratings were still good it just wasn't quite as good as I was thinking and probably because of those wheels but let's go ahead and wrap things up and I'll tell you what we think of this Jeep Grand Cherokee L now to wrap things up on this 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, I'm really glad to see Jeep bring out a three row version that's not just a tiny bit stretched. I mean, this gives you a lot of extra space over the regular Grand Cherokee. It looks good. It's got a ton of luxurious features, especially when you get to that top end Summit Reserve model. I mean, that is a pure luxury SUV at that price point and with everything that you get with it. You get a V8, you get several things that you don't expect to see in this class of a vehicle and Jeep really hit this thing out of the park. Now obviously this is the first year of this model so it'll be interesting to see how things pan out, what owners think and I'd love to know what you guys think of your first impressions of this Jeep Grand Cherokee L so please leave your comments down below. But in my opinion I think Jeep gave you a complete package of a vehicle. I mean you've got the towing and power capabilities, you've got the lux luxury inside, you've got the space for families, you've got the looks of a nice vehicle. It's just expensive at each price point, but you get a lot for that money too. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this every single week. Click the thumbs up button if you liked it. It really helps me out. I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time.